we produce a lot of water and a, kind of a shocking amount of it gets lost. Uh, the quality matters, so just like all those fuels had to go through numerous purification steps, obviously we want clean water for uh, whether it's drinking or chemical processes. Chemical processes may even be more sensitive than humans are to the wa water quality. Uh, in terms of chemistry versus society, uh, water and energy are both competing against you know, making a chemical versus you know, keeping somebody warm and healthy and fed and everything. Water has to be distributed across large distances. It's directly tied to the environment in pretty much every way. And uh, the more you invest in it, the more quality you get. Just like you know, fuels, the more, you, more complicated your system, you can get a nicer fuel out, you know, clean coal, clean diesel, whatever. And then uh, on the political side, it's also very heavily regulated. So I, I think pretty ev everyone has a good idea that water is, uh, a lot of things are competing for water. Um, as a chemist, if we're doing a reaction that needs a little bit of water, that, you know, that's really important to us, but uh, you know, people in other parts of the world are uh, having to deal with water for uh, a lot more critical things to them. Industrial water is just one, of one box out of many, many uh, boxes in the overall uh, water cycle, so we have to be pretty cognizant of if we're going to set up a chemical process that uses water or, in fact, just uses energy at all, how that's going to affect these other applications. So again, just like energy, the, the critical driver is that there's just not a lot of water for increasing demand. So uh, although there's plenty of ocean water, pretty much everybody wants groundwater and fresh water for chemical processes as well as drinking and basic needs. And the amount of fresh water that's available looks like a pretty big number. But then when you start to look at, uh, this, is, this is a number just for the US itself, how much we process or touch in some way uh, every year. These numbers are, I mean, they're five orders of, magnitudes of, uh, five orders of magnitude apart. But if you consider just the, the, the quantity of water, it's, it's pretty impressive, I think, that we're affecting that much of the, the global water supply. And if you were to multiply this across the whole world, this would obviously uh, go up probably another order of magnitude. And why that's important is that different parts of the world have different access to water. I'm sure everybody is pretty familiar with that. And so why this matters for chemicals is if you're producing, say, uh, you know, a chemical in India as opposed to producing a chemical in Canada, uh, if you're having a very water-intensive process, you're going to be having, creating much larger impacts in some of these countries as opposed to areas where the water is plentiful. So the, the national labs have produced these same kind of flow charts like we saw for energy, and they're kind of set up the same way. So here are the sources over on the side, uh, surface water, either fresh or salty, and then groundwater, fresh or salty, and then the different uses. So uh, domestic, here's the, the industrial use, and then what happens to the water in the end. So a lot of it just gets re-discharged uh, or uh, spent uh, discharged to the ocean and then either completely consumed or evaporated back into the global water cycle. And so if we look at the commercial and industrial, because this is where chemicals are, one of the important things is that a lot of it is being drawn from the public water supply. And the reason that's important is because the, the public water supply is one of the most heavily purified systems. So it has all these embedded impacts associated with that technology. So um, you know, we, we don't just drink directly from the river, it has to go through uh, you know, settling stages, filtrations, there's usually chemical processes applied, all those things have their embedded energy. Some of those processes have their own water requirements. And then, for the, then finally it's getting into the industrial process, which may be, again, tweaking it even further before finally it gets released. And just like we saw for energy with uh, losses and transmission lines, we see uh, arguably worse in water systems because a lot of the water infrastructure, especially in the U.S., was built you know, 100 years ago, if not earlier, and has not been maintained very well. So uh, looking at some of the large water systems in the U.S., here's Philadelphia, more than 30 percent of the water is just lost in the pipe system. So they're applying, they're extracting a lot of groundwater, they're treating it, and then a, a pretty large proportion of that is just going back into 
into the uh, to places where it's not going to be used. And I mean, this is only a couple of water districts across the U.S., but you can start to kind of consider the added up impacts from uh, just the losses themselves and then the financial value if, if you're not entirely motivated by the environmental impacts. There are clearly uh, economic impacts that can be associated with this as well.